Man, can a guy take a vacation without something insane happening at the Oscars? As you probably know, Will Smith slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. <laughs> As a lawyer, I have some thoughts about this. But first, let's look at the video. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win! <laughs> Okay, so the funny thing about the setup is that it's kind of pedestrian. <laughs> He's poking fun at uh, Javier Bardem and his wife, who he doesn't name, which he really should. And he's just kind of ribbing, creating fake marital strife. And of course, he's going to turn to Will and Jada in a second, but it's kind of a pedestrian setup. And like, the joke is there's fake strife there. He is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, <laughs> Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? So here, Will Smith laughs, kind of a chuckle, not much. Jada's clearly not happy about that. Of course, the backstory here is that Jada Pinkett Smith suffers from alopecia. So she shaved her head because she was losing her hair. This is a medical condition. It is a disease. And of course, I'm sure she's incredibly self-conscious about it. <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. And the crowd turns on Chris Rock. You can imagine another universe where... The next day, basically, Chris Rock gets canceled because he makes fun of Jada because of a medical condition, all for a stupid joke that's a callback to a movie that's 20 years old. And the, the audience hated it. Like, they were against Chris Rock, and he's like, ah, that's just a gentle ribbing. And, you know, true, it's not much. It's, that's, that's really, really uh, mild as these kind of roasts go. And on top of it, the crowd was already against Rock. This is, this is an insane setup for what happens next. I'm here. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so Will Smith gets up. Chris Rock here is just laughing because I think he thinks it's a bit. And also, this could be completely fake. It could be a made up drama. They could have agreed to this ahead of time. We'll talk about the legal ramifications of that. But it looks genuine like Chris Rock is going to engage in some colloquy with Will Smith as part of a bit, like making the joke, leaning into the joke. Of course, he leans in a different way. <laughs> Boom. Oh, wow. Okay, so to me, that doesn't look like a punch. That looks like an open-fisted slap. He comes from below. He slaps Chris Rock across the face. You would think the guy who played Muhammad Ali, who trained like Muhammad Ali, Will Smith, uh, would know how to throw a real punch. And I don't think that that's what he's doing there. I don't think he's throwing a real punch. And we'll talk about the ramifications of this open-fisted slap. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. You gotta hand it to Chris Rock, though. Handles it like a pro. Is physically accosted and just rolls with it without me missing a beat. I mean, I guess that's that's why he's Chris Rock. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a GI Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. I'm going to. Okay. Man. You'd think there's got to be some past history here, and we'll talk about what that means. That doesn't seem like a normal reaction to a lame joke that's really modest, but he's clearly furious. That's very interesting that he's that angry. We'll see if that plays into the charges, the potential charges, and the potential defenses. But that is a really weird reaction. How often do you hear about people physically assaulting people for a mild dig like this? <laughs> I could, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. And then Chris Rock okay. tries to play it off with a joke. Um, I, I would love to know if Chris Rock has ever been accosted in a comedy set. I mean, he's taken bigger shots at much more violent people. And yet here we are in the Oscars and Will Smith slaps him. And then of course, Will Smith wins the Oscar for best actor. That's just insane. I'm actually surprised that the Academy went through with awarding it, given that in the past, people like Jeremy Clarkson have been fired from some of the most popular TV shows in the world. I'm kind of surprised that the Academy went through and gave Will Smith his award. He, of course, made a pseudo apology during his acceptance speech. And in the past, Will Smith has talked about not wanting to be a vessel for violence and being a vessel for love. Uh, it is incredibly ironic uh, that all of this happened at 
roughly exactly the same time. Just insane. Okay, so right off the bat, let's talk about whether this constitutes assault and battery. And obviously, it depends, because everything always depends. I'm just kidding. This is definitely assault and battery. Under California Penal Code 240, assault is the attempt to use violence against someone. It's not the actual physical violence itself, it is the attempt. Battery, on the other hand, is the actual physical touching and the physical force and violence against somebody else. Specifically, California Penal Code 242 defines battery as the any willful or unlawful use of force or violence against the person of another. Now, you can be prosecuted for battery even if you don't cause any physical injury or pain. Really, all that's required is that you physically touch that person. And simple battery is a misdemeanor that carries with it a potential six months in jail, that's the maximum, uh, and a $2,000 fine. Now, obviously, those maximums aren't dished out uh, on the regular. Now obviously here, since Chris Rock was able to continue with the set almost like nothing happened, you can understand that uh, he didn't really suffer any long-lasting injury or pain. He just kind of rolled with it. But just because Chris Rock didn't suffer any demonstrable pain or injury, and obviously he felt pain when he was slapped, but it's probably no ongoing injury there, that doesn't mean that Will Smith cannot be prosecuted for assault and battery. Though by the same token, the fact that Will Smith uh, did not use a closed-fisted punch with all of his might, that probably means that if potential charges came, they're not going to be the maximum. Uh, the police have better things to do than press these kind of charges. But you can imagine if he did punch Chris Rock Muhammad Ali style, that maybe that would convince the district attorney to move forward, and that might up the charges to something uh, on the more severe end of the charges that you can bring, uh, simply because it would have injured Chris Rock more. Now, this almost goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. A lot of people have brought up the self-defense argument here. Uh, defending your wife from hurtful words words does not qualify as a justification for using self-defense or any kind of force against another person. Though if Chris Rock consented to it, that would defeat it. If Will Smith did uh, agree ahead of time with Chris Rock to engage in this punch for the publicity or whatever, then that would mitigate any charges. Consent would be a defense to this kind of assault and battery. Additionally, some people are throwing around the First Amendment exception of fighting words. This definitely doesn't qualify as fighting words. Again, this is just a joke, a bad joke against another person. Basically, uh, the, the whole words are violence crew on Twitter, very, very wrong in many different ways. There is no justification for using force against someone who just says mean things against you, at least no legal justification. And in fact, I actually found a California jury instruction, the law that is given to the jury in a case like this, that specifically says that words cannot give rise to violence. Specifically, the jury instructions say, words, no matter how offensive, and acts that are not threatening are not enough to justify assault or battery. Uh, yeah, so fighting words, not applicable here. Now, that being said, a lot of different news sites are reporting that Chris Rock doesn't want to file charges, doesn't want to press charges against Will Smith, and as if that ends the inquiry. It actually doesn't. Uh Almost always, even if the victim decides not to press charges against someone, a district attorney can still move forward with the case. Now, there are certainly some pragmatic considerations that if the main witness who uh, was the victim of a crime doesn't want to testify, well, then you're going to have a hard time proving your case. And a lot of people have said online that, uh, you know, if Chris Rock doesn't want to testify, there's no way that they can authenticate the video or, you know, make the case. I guarantee if the police wanted to press these charges, they don't need to call Chris Rock. They could call anyone that was in the auditorium at the time. Those people could authenticate the videotape and they could testify as to their first-hand witnessing as to what happened. So that's to say that the normal considerations uh, where the victim is the only witness to a crime uh, don't apply here. There are hundreds if not thousands of witnesses who can not only testify to direct uh, witnessing that they did, but can authenticate the videotape that was internationally broadcast around the world. But the bottom line here is that Will Smith started making trouble in his neighborhood. He got in one little fight. It's time that he move in with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Hopefully this video doesn't get demonetized because of the violence and the cursy words that were used throughout. Uh, but if it does, you should go watch a, an ad-free version of this video over on Nebula, where I have all of my exclusive content, including uh, my first documentary, Bad Law Words Good, uh, videos that are exclusive to Nebula, because I always have to worry about my content getting demonetized on YouTube. And in fact, now is a great time to get access to Nebula, because we have an exclusive deal with CuriosityStream, which has some of the greatest documentary content on the internet. 
and you can get a bundle deal between CuriosityStream and Nebula, where you get Nebula for free. So if you enjoy Legal Eagle, if you would like exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else, bloopers, extended versions, new videos, my first long form documentary, Bad Law Words Good, all of that content is available exclusively on Nebula, which you can get for free with CuriosityStream just by using the link that is on screen right now. There's simply no better deal in streaming right now. You get two great streaming platforms for less than $15 per year at the current sales price, and you'll actually watch that content. Plus, you'll be helping out educational content creators like myself. So click on the link that's on screen right now or down in the description to get both Nebula and CuriosityStream for less than $15 per day. And while you're there, click on this playlist over here with all of my other reactions to crazy legal things. Uh, sometimes it's drama, sometimes it's the Oscars. So click on this link or I'll see you in court.